الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to the Friday Halaqat Abu Huraira Center and we are still taking a thematic approach to the book of Allah سبحانه وتعالى uh, We've been dealing with the surahs trying to focus on the central theme in every surah and then trying to see how all the topics in the surah support and feed into the central theme and what are the benefits that we can take or utilize uh, in our personal life as we are learning these lessons from the Quran. We've reached Surah, uh, surah, uh, surah Yusuf alayhi salam and uh, this is session number four in Surah and inshallah the final session in Surah, num, in surah Yusuf. Uh, we, we got to the point where the brothers of Yusuf السلام, went to Egypt for the second time along with their young, youngest brother Benjamin. And um, they came to Yusuf السلام, and he had a plan and his plan was to leave the uh, measuring cup or the golden cup of the king in the luggage of his youngest brother. And then he sent the police to catch the perpetrator. And eventually they found the cup in the luggage of Benjamin or Benjamin. And uh, so they they offered the brothers of Yusuf what, which punishment, which like penal system you want to apply. The one that applies, that you guys apply back home in Palestine or the uh, law of the land in Egypt and they obviously they opted for the law that was practiced in Palestine because it's it was less severe apparently than the one that was in Egypt because in Egypt the the punishment for theft was uh, sometimes murder or was capital punishment let's say uh, <clears throat> So they went back to their father. They tried with Yusuf alayhi salam. Apparently up until this moment, they had not realized the real identity of Yusuf alayhi salam. He just was an official, a high official or a minister in Egypt. Um, so they requested that he let their young, youngest brother go and he could take any one of them, anyone else. But Yusuf alayhi salam insisted to keep uh, Benjamin. Uh, they went back to Palestine to their father, except for one of them, who uh, basically said, um, uh, I will not, we gave our father a promise and I will not go back un until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me permission or Allah gives us a way out of this uh, complicated situation. So they went back, the rest of them went back to their father, Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam. They told him the story as they had experienced it and uh, he realized there was more to the story than what you guys are telling it's not like he was accusing them of you know messing around when it comes to ben benjamin but he uh, he re he could read more into the situation and he was blaming them primarily for the first uh, plot with Yusuf alayhi salam. Um, and, and at that time again, his, we said he, he was very sad at the loss of Yusuf and he kept remembering Yusuf alayhi salam to the point that his eyes turned red, turned white. Some scholars say this means that he lost his eyesight. And we can see that this is actually apparent in the, towards the end of the, the end of the, of the story. Uh, and this shows just how much love Prophet Yaqub had for his son. And no one should ever think that Yusuf was not content with the Qadr of Allah. That Yaqub was not content with the Qadr of Allah. He was actually content. He was pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this is the natural love of a father. And this was not just the natural love. It was a very special love that Prophet Yaqub had for his son Yusuf specifically. So this is something Allah put in his heart. And this was the reason for his sadness. And this was the reason for the state of, again, probably excessive weeping and crying, which led to him losing his, his eyesight. 
And this should not be used to justify people who despair of the mercy of Allah or people who beat themselves up and uh, wallow in, in, in pain and misery. Uh, so there is, there, is, there is a level of suffering that is beyond our control. But there is part of our experience that is still within our control because any situation is, is not just a simple entity. It is multidimensional. So our hearts should be able to connect to the deeper dimension and that's realizing that everything happens by the permission of Allah, by the will of Allah. And that Allah is the creator of everything. And that everything that Allah allows, that everything that ha happens, Allah wrote that down. And everything Allah writes down and allows to happen, it must, it must be in its ultimate sense, it must be good. There must be a good end to all of this, or there must be a good, a wise purpose behind all of this. So speaking about a prophet like Yaqub alayhi salam, this was definitely the case with him. Yet at another dimension, which was again more of the human level, the human experience, he was experiencing the loss of his most beloved son. And having faith does not mean you lose your humanity or you lose your human experience. On the contrary, Iman means that you can actually experience or go through the experience at many levels at the same time. And that's actually profound, a very profound one. <clears throat> So this was what happened with uh, Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam. And again, the brothers, every time Yusuf alayhi salam is mentioned or the whole issue of Yusuf is brought to their attention, they feel, again, it's the, it's the pain, it's the regret, it's the sense of guilt bothers them. And then they're not, they, they show a lot of, in, like a great deal of intolerance towards the mention of Yusuf alayhi salam and what they did to him. Uh, there's a very famous verse that is often quote, quoted here, and this is verse number 86, where Prophet Yaqub says, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَشْكُوا بَثِّي وَحُزْنِي إِلَى اللَّهِ وَأَعْلَمُ مِنَ اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And this combines the two dimensions we spoke about. He says, I'm only expressing my pain and complaining to Allah. So I'm, 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 I'm venting out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to you. Because, so I, I'm not having expectations from you. Um, I know about Allah, what you don't know. And I know from Allah, what you don't know. Meaning he knows how Allah handles the affairs of this world. And thus there is trust here. There is faith that everything happens. There is wise purpose behind it. And everything that happens that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring a good end uh, to it, especially if you adhere by the things that we will see Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam mentions clearly. So this is a, these are the tools to handle the, the qadr, even when it seems to be going in the wrong direction. But that's a matter of perspective. So he says to them, So he says, Oh my children, go and seek some news, some knowledge about Yusuf and his brother. Now, to them, this, this sounds out of context. What are you talking about? Like, are you seriously asking us or expecting us to, to look for news about Yusuf? And, and like to them doesn't make sense. Why? Because he sees what they don't see. He knows what they don't know. And that's his faith in Allah, his trust, his yaqeen in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says to them, do not despair of the mercy of Allah because none despairs of the mercy of Allah, but the disbelievers. And this shows that we do not deal with circumstances in life or conditions on face value. This is just one perspective. There is more depth to any situation. And this depth comes with faith. And it comes with true faith. It's not just any kind of faith. Faith that is based on the book of Allah, based on revelation and the sunnah of the Prophet. So they go to Egypt now, third time. And they go to Yusuf. They enter upon him and they say, Ya Yuhal Aziz, oh, like, 
you know, minister or uh, your royalty, whatever. You know, harm has come to us and to our families. Now we are in a very difficult situation and we have brought, you know, some uh, of our, like some of the stuff over our stuff that we want to sell. And it's not really of great value. So help us, you know, get our provisions. Help us get, you know, the provisions uh, in full and give it, even give it, give us more. And if you, if you would do us a favor as well, that would be great. And then they, they said, again, they use Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, and they say, Allah rewards those who do good, those who are gentle and kind and, and, and generous. <laughs> so ironically, again, now they, they bring the mention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now they're talking about being good, right? So Yusuf alayhi salam sees this as an opportunity to reveal his true identity to them. So he says, excuse me. <coughs> he says, he says, don't you recall what you did to your to Yusuf and his brother? But again, somebody might say, yeah, we know they what they did to Yusuf, but what, what did they do to the, his brother? Well, they still harbored the same, same kind of negative emotions towards his brother. Because if you remember at the beginning of the story, they said, Yusuf and his brother, you know, are dearer to our father than us. So they still had the same attitude towards his younger brother, but they could not commit another crime like they did against Yusuf alayhi <clears throat> salam. When you were in a state of jahl, in a state of ignorance, in a state of misbehaving, now the dots were connected for them. All of their suspicion, all of their, again, like when they first saw Yusuf, but again, when, when, they, when they were under the impression that Yusuf was gone, they did not entertain the possibility that this actually could be Yusuf. Although they, some of them probably had like second thoughts. I don't know. Or I would say it's like a, a very unconscious kind of feel about it. But now with, when Yusuf Islam reveals his own identity, indirectly by reminding them of a secret that only him and they know, only the family knows about. Actually, it's only him and them. So, uh, so they say, you are a innaka la anta Yusuf. Like, like, again, the statement here is just, it's like a question and then it's like an emphasis. You are, you must be Yusuf, right? It's something like this. Are, are you really Yusuf? Okay, so. I am Yusuf and this is indeed my brother. And Allah has blessed us. Allah has, you know, bestowed his bounty upon us. And here Yusuf reveals his secret. What is his secret? He says, إِنَّهُ مَنْ يَتَّقِ وَيَصْبِرْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Indeed, he or she who has taqwa is dutiful to Allah. They always do the right things, they fulfill the obligations, they abstain from prohibitions. They act morally towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They act according to the moral obligations towards the Creator. وَيَصْبِرْ and remains patient. Patient. Allah does not waste the reward of those who do well. This is Yusuf's secret, alayhi salam. So he's saying, <clears throat> whoever is dutiful, fulfills Allah's right, and is mindful of Allah. And when it comes to dealing, that's dealing with Allah. Dealing with life, which will definitely test you. How do you deal with it? You deal with it with patience because it's going to test you. It's going, harm will come your way. Uh, suffering, struggle, obstacles, discomfort, all that is going to come to you. How do you respond to that? If you respond with patience, then you are just placing yourself on the right side of Al Qadr, where even when bad things happen, 
everything will be working in your best interest. And that's, that's, that's just, a, that's the secret of dealing with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they said to him, again, again, they, they're not getting his lesson. They, or they're probably getting his point, but they sort of realized now, you know, they cannot win with Yusuf. Their envy, their hate cannot win with Yusuf. So they decided at that moment, it seems, to change their attitude towards Yusuf. And thus they say, Indeed, Allah has favored you upon us. Favored you. And now we can see that even with your wisdom and your knowledge and the status, you know, how Allah made things work for you in such a way. And indeed, we were, you know, wrong in what we did. We, we, are, we are blameworthy. He said, it's not here to blame you. I don't want to bring old you know, books, open old books and start bringing the whole story. And that's a sign of someone who really has taqwa and has patience. They don't have time for blame. They don't have time for, you know, getting into dramas and, 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 and dragging their feet, you know, pulling all that history, bringing it up and, 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 and uh, taking things personal. Yusuf alayhi salam, imagine like, they sort of changed the course of his life completely, right? But Allah made it work for him. He, he could blame them, but he didn't do that. He, he could hold them accountable, but he did not do that. For all the suffering that he had to go through, he did not, you know, he just let that go. He forgave them. And this comes from someone who has taqwa and has patience. And also another thing that we have in Surah Yusuf that you'll find, Yusuf mentions many times, Gratitude. A couple of times he mentions gratitude, thankfulness. So you add this, these three beautiful things together: taqwa, dutifulness to Allah, patience, and shukr, gratitude. Bring them together. When you are grateful, again, you overlook other people's mistakes. You become forgiving. So he says, you know, no blame on you. Or oh, I'm not gonna bring that up on you. I don't wanna like. Uh, call you out Allah inshallah Allah will forgive you he's the most merciful uh, then he gives them uh, his shirt and he says take that to my father and you know uh, bring it to his face he will get back his eyesight so they travel back to Palestine the father says, I can find the smell of Yusuf. And now you know what kind of love he had for his son. May peace and blessings be upon them. Um, so again, they, they, they bring the shirt of Yusuf السلام, close to his face. He, he gets his eyesight uh, back. And we can see this is probably a trial to him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says to them, didn't I tell you that I know from Allah what you don't know? Don't think when you go against Allah that you can win. Don't think that when you, when you act on your envy, jealousy, hate, that you can win. It, 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 life is, way, is, is very well designed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that these evil, I would say emotions, if you act on these evil emotions, you cannot win. You just cannot win. I mean, even, even if you seem to be making progress or winning at some level, the destruction you bring about, especially to yourself, is way more than what you get. Then they, they, tend, they ask their father to seek forgiveness for them. Uh, so Allah forgives their sins. He says, I shall you know, seek forgiveness for you. Indeed, Allah is oft forgiving and merciful. And then they bring the father and the mother and they go to Yusuf alayhi salam. Uh, he raises his parents on the throne. He puts them up on a pedestal. But they all prostrate before him. And this is something that has to do with the previous nations. With many of the previous nations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, made prostration a sign of um, respect, a sign of respect and not an act of worship. Not necessarily an act of worship. Um, so, 
people would be like some people of respect would be like a qibla. So the sujood, some scholars say the sujood is for Allah, but the direction, the person that you prostrate, in whose direction you prostrate, this is like respect for them, but it's not worship for them. So, but in Islam, in the uh, revelation that was given to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, prostrating to other than Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is an act of disbelief, an act of blasphemy. So when they prostrate, and this is his father and his mother, they prostrate in the direction of Yusuf Alayhi Salam and his 11 brothers. This is the manifestation of his dream as a child. When he said to his father, Ya abati inni ra'aytu ahada ashara kawkaba wa shamsa wal qamara ra'aytuhum li sajideen. He said, uh, and I saw, he said to his dad, I saw 11 planets and the sun and the moon prostrating in my direction. This was it. The sun and the moon represent his father and mother and the 11 uh, planets represent his brothers and sisters. وَقَدْ أَحْسَنَ بِي إِذْ أَخْرَجَنِي مِنَ السِّجْنِ وَجَاءَ بِكُمْ مِنَ الْبَدْوِ مِنْ بَعْدِ أَنَّ زَغَ الشَّيْطَانُ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ إِخْوَتِي He's praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yusuf, look, I mean, again, so Yusuf now is looking, he's summarizing his uh, uh, life story. Anybody who's been through hard or tough times, they would usually focus on the negatives. Look at what Yusuf, السلام, how his vision of what was happening with him, how, how that vision was. So he says, and Allah has been very good to me. Allah has been very good to me, has, has, has been very kind to me. And, and, uh, and he brought me out of prison. He brought me out of prison. He didn't say Allah put me in prison. He said, Allah brought me out of prison. And he brought you from the nomad areas here to civilization, to the city. <clears throat> After shaitan, you know, brought enmity or dissension between me and my brothers. He doesn't even look at, he doesn't even blame his brothers now. He got over that. It's amazing. And it's an amazing level of selflessness, transcendence, forgiveness. And he says, Inna Rabbi latifun li ma yasha. And he just, here's a secret. Allah is subtle in his own ways. Allah works in subtle ways, mysterious ways we don't know about. When Allah wants something, he makes it happen. Allah wants something. He makes it happen in ways that are beyond our uh, grasp. Indeed, Allah is all-knowing, <clears throat> omniscient, and all-wise. Then he turns to Allah in gratitude and he says, رَبِّ قَدْ آتَيْتَنِي مِنَ الْمُلْكِ وَعَلَّمْتَنِي مِنْ تَأْوِيلِ الْحَادِيثِ فَاطِرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَنْتَ وَلِيِّهِ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةَ تَوَفَّنِي مُسْلِمًا وَالْحَقْنِي بِالصَّالِحِينَ He turns to Allah and he says, Oh my Lord, you have given me you know, strength, power, and you have taught me understanding. And, uh, and, and this is knowledge of revelation and knowledge of interpreting dreams and wisdom. You are the originator of the heavens and the earth. And you are my Lord and my guardian in this life and in the hereafter. You know, when you take me back to you, take me back as a Muslim, as someone who's submissive to his Lord and allow me to join the company of the righteous ones. <clears throat> Allah says this is from the news of the unseen. And here he addresses Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And again, this shows that this is a reminder to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to see how, you know, trials are inevitable and it's how you deal with them. And putting your trust in Allah is going to empower you against any kind of circumstance. So there are points here, a couple of points that I wanted to highlight. Another important verse, a verse in Surah Yusuf is verse number 108, where Allah says, or addresses Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he commands him to say something. He says, Say, O Muhammad, this is my path. I call to Allah, to the path of Allah upon clarity. I have truth. I have revelation from Allah. And there's no doubt about this. So I'm upon clarity. 
I do that and those who follow me do this. And this means the ones who follow Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu until the day of judgment. Uh, and glory be to Allah, exalted is Allah. And I will, I'm not from among those who associate partners. Then Allah highlights again a, a lesson here from Surah Yusuf and from the story of Yusuf and from the uh, something that applies to the life to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Verse number uh, 110. Until the prophets, when they conveyed the message, they reached a point where they completely despaired. They lost hope. They gave up on their people. And this is not just like a, a hasty kind of giving up, but it's it's a it's a well substantiated. Um, you know, active giving up or, or, or losing hope in these people and the positive response of these people. Allah says, and when the prophets think that they have been completely rejected, the victory of Allah, the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and the, the punishment of Allah will not be removed from the, you know, the criminals. Then Allah closes the surah by saying, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي قَصَصِهِمْ عِبْرَةٌ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Indeed, in their stories, there are lessons for people of understanding. And again, the first one of those is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all believers. And, and as, as you mentioned, we just tried to glean the lessons as we go through the surah. Uh, and they are, they are beautiful. And there's a lot of practical implications for, for understanding these lessons. And that's basically, no matter how tough circumstances are, that does not mean your life is miserable. It does not mean that uh, Allah has let you down or Allah uh, is not taking care of you. That's not the case. This, is, this would be a very superficial judgment on life. There is more to any situation. There's more depth. There are more hidden elements in every situation and in how things unfold. As long as you maintain trust in Allah and you keep the three things that Yusuf uh, I mean, clearly... Uh, I would say um, demonstrated, uh, which is gratitude, taqwa, and sabr, patience. If that's these are the three, if you master these three tools, you'll become unbeatable, literally unbeatable in this life. I mean, you're gonna go th go through hardship. You will lose some battles. Yes, you will have losses. You will experience setbacks and everything, just like any human being. But the deeper meaning of everything and the overall meaning and direction of your life will be very positive in proportion to the level you reach in these three elements. And Allah mentions that in these stories, there are lessons that you can draw. There are benefits. And this is why the Quran is actually full of stories. So with this, we finish uh, with uh, looking at the themes of Surah Yusuf. I think uh, Surah Yusuf took us four sessions, and that's the longest we stayed, I believe, with any single you know, surah of that length. But I think the surah is full of lessons, and it's worth actually going through it this way. Inshallah, we'll go back to uh, our normal speed, so we'll speed up with Surah Al-Ra'd, which we are going to do with uh, next Friday. Again, as usual, I, I just say, stay safe and make sure that uh, you and your family uh, are safe. And we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitates that we are able to go back to the masajid and pray our Jumu'ah and pray our congregations, congregational prayers at the masjid. Um, these, I mean, these, these month, like last 12 months have been really tough. Um, with all of the lockdowns and the restrictions and not being able to go to the masajid and uh, experience the congregation and the community. Uh, it, it, it's been a struggle. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward everyone who's been patient and uh, to help you know, relieve this predicament and bring us back to his house and help us worship him in a congregation. So I say with this, inshallah, we conclude. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu alayk. 
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته